Hi everybody, I hope you're having a great day. This is Dan, and in this quick video, we're going to talk about how to use custom fonts in a Swift Drive project for macOS and also iOS. So, first of all, what even are custom fonts? They're basically anything apart from the default system font. Now, you can see that in any kind of Xcode, iOS, or macOS op uh, project, um, the default font is applied. This is called SF Pro, by the way. And if you wanted to change that font, for example, if you were designing an app for a company or business that already had their own branded font, like Adobe, uh, or even if you just like the design of a certain font in your app, then you could add this font as a custom font and use it. And this video is going to show you how to do just that. So first of all, where do you actually get these fonts from? Google Fonts is by far my favourite place, so it's fonts.google.com. Uh, for four main reasons. First of all, because it's completely free. Second of all, because you've got uh, like hundreds of thousands of different fonts. And also because Figma, pretty much everyone's favourite design tool, sources most of their fonts from Google Fonts. And we've got all of the Google Fonts here that we can use. Now let's talk about how to use custom fonts in the project. So the first thing to do is actually to get a font file. Now these are either .ttf files or OTF. And to find when we go to fonts.google.com, we find the font family that we'd like. We press on get font. And let me just go ahead and find another font that I quite like. We can use these, um, these categories right here. And I know the one I'm looking for. Here it is. We could go ahead and get font again. And once we've selected all the fonts that we like, press on download all. And let's save it to downloads. You can see it downloads a zip with both of those fonts inside. And here it is. Let's go ahead and open it. We've got a folder for each font. And here are the fonts. Now let's go ahead and open up Xcode. We can make a new project. It's a macOS app to begin with. We're going to call it Fonts Demo for Mac and iOS. It's with Swift UI. And I'll save it to my downloads folder. Wonderful. So let's go and make a new group called Fonts. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the fonts that I'd like which are this Gamma Armly font. I'll we'll drag it inside of Xcode. We press on add to targets and copy items if needed, but those must be checked. And let's do the same for the Volcorn font. Note that sometimes you may see these variable fonts. Now, I think you can actually use these inside of Xcode, but this video is not about that. So we're gonna come into the static folder and we're going to add some of these fonts. Now, a quick tip for for um, adding fonts to your project. You could just select them all and add them, but I mean, generally, it's a good idea to add only the fonts that you think you might need. What I like to do is I like to have the regular version and the italic version. Basically, the regular and the italic go together, and the bold and the bold italic one go together as well. And that will allow you to use the italic and the bold modifiers on those fonts. If you wanted to, you could add all of the different font weights to use properly the font weight modifier and to get all of these other font weights. So let's pick all these and drag them into my fonts group. Make sure add to targets is checked, press on finish. And wonderful, that is stage one, we've added the fonts to the Xcode project. Stage two is to configure the Xcode project to use those fonts. Now this is a little bit tricky, and this is where it varies depending on which operating system you're on, iOS or macOS. So either way, we're going to go into the project settings, and then we're going to go into the target settings. You might need to press it in the drop down menu or in the sidebar. Go to the info tab and if you are on a Mac OS, you want to add another key. So hover over any of these, press on the plus button. And that key is going to be application fonts resources path. And this is going to be the path relative to the resources directory where the fonts are located. Now you can see the fonts are directly inside of resources folder. So the resources path of the fonts is resources so we can just press a dot for that. Now I will be going into a bit more detail about that later on but let me just say that if you are designing for an iOS then you want to add instead of this fonts resources path you want to add fonts with capital F provided by application. You can see this is an array of strings and what you want to do here is you want to copy all of the names of all the fonts into the values. So hopefully you get the gist without me writing all of them out. So you're just going to copy the names exactly of all the font files into the uh, different keys. And you press the plus button to add more keys. Now, of course, if you're designing for a Mac and an iOS, you're just going to have both of these um, both of these keys. Now, I'm not going to keep this fonts provided by application, so I'll just delete that. 
Now, what, what is so significant about this dot in the application fonts resources path? Now let's go ahead and build the project with product build or command B. Let's go and show the build folder in Finder with product show build folder in Finder. You can see that this in products debug, here is the app, let's show package contents. Let's go into contents and here is resources. You can see all of these fonts that I've added here are being directly inside of the resources folder. So the resources folder is the fonts folder. And remember what this application fonts resources path is. This is the path to find the fonts in relative to resources. And that is resources, so we're just gonna put dot for that. Now, let me talk about the reason why this might differ. Let's go into the build phases tab and you can see copy bundle resources all of these fonts are being copied to the resources folder now if that was not the case and you instead made a copy files phase copied to the resources the subject being fonts for example and copied all of these different fonts and uh, let's go ahead and build the project again now let's show the build folder in finder you can see that what's happening now if i show package contents Instead of the fonts being directly inside the resources folder, we copied them to the fonts folder inside resources. And so the value for the application fonts resources path, the fonts forward slash, because the path relative to resources is this fonts directory out here to find the fonts in. So hopefully that's kind of made a little bit of sense. If not, then please don't worry about it. Just stick with the dot for the application fonts resources path. I know it might be confusing that we put the fonts inside this fonts path in the Xcode project, but that does not reflect the actual bundle structure of your built app. So that is stage two. The next stage, stage three, is to actually access those fonts. So let's make a new Swift file. It's gonna be called font extension. And we're going to import Swift UI in here. And we're going to make an extension of the font. And we're going to make static let my font one to font with capital F dot custom. And we can pass in the postscript name of the font. Now, often from Google Fonts, this is just the file name without the extension. So let's access this Gamamli regular. Let's copy the name. This is the postscript name, by the way. The size, let's just set at. Uh, 40 for example let's go and do the same for my font 2 and this one is going to be volcorn regular and the size this time let's just set at uh, 32 for example now of course the size it don't matter i'm just setting these for now and that is stage three done you've successfully integrated some custom fonts into your project now let me just go ahead and show you that this is working so i'm going to open up my content view i'm going to delete this jump from vstack I have some text saying my font number one and we're going to go ahead and modify this with font called my font one let's go ahead and make a duplicate of that with my font number two and my font two and you can see it's working just like so now of course the problem if yours is not working is that you might have not got the right postscript name often i find it's always the postscript name that lets you down and if you're not sure about the postscript name basically just try copying the file name as the postscript name see if that works and if it doesn't then this is what to do so we open the font in finder then we go ahead and open it with font book let's go ahead and install the font once it's validated and you can see now once it's installed, we can go to my fonts and let's go and find that font inside of here. Here it is right down at the bottom. Go ahead and press on it. Make sure the info tab is there and look into the identifiers and go ahead and copy the postscript name. And this is your postscript name. I forgot to say, but if I open up font book again, and then if you want to, you could just go ahead and delete the font with a backspace. Now let's go ahead and paste that inside of here. And that is indeed your postscript name. Let's do Volcorn regular, because I wanna show you that you don't have to make my fonts two, three, four, five, etc. for all of the different bold, bold italic, regular, regular italic, etc. cetera. Swift UI can actually infer that. So whilst only having this Volcorn regular as my font two, I can still go ahead and make this bold, 
and it will look bold and italic swift ui you don't have to make my font 2 my font 2 bold my font 2 bold italic etc you can just use these modifiers straight away 